summit here. If you're watching this, this is my continuing attempts to do a the ask as series. And I can't even pronounce it. It looks good on paper or it looks good on the screen. Ask as 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 s. Oh. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is episode two of this, and I'm trying my best to keep this going as a daily series whenever possible. And yeah, my hope is that I'll be able to help you guys answer questions that you guys have about music, about music, about jazz, about guitar. Hey, Aaron, man. How you doing, man? How was your day? How's your day been today, bro? Tell me more about yourself, Aaron. I mean, I, I, you're, you're te I assume you're, you're teaching guitar. Are you teaching privately, or um, are you teaching at a music school, or tell me more about yourself, man? Hey, Sean, how you doing, man? Half student and half tutor. Okay. Are you are you studying music or are you are you studying learning music theory all day? Awesome, man. That sounds like a great day. Half student, half tutor. Um, where are you studying? Amil here. Amil just did his uh, Facebook Live. Hey, Amil. Hope your Facebook Live went well, man. The audio was uh, it was uh, some issue with the audio. I think it's um, it's doing some ducking in the audio just now on your thing. Uh, it, I think it has to do with the settings on the mic. Um. The earphones are on for the microphone. So you're listening. Actually, the microphone I'm using are this. This is the microphone I'm using. I find that this is the faster setup that I have. It's not optimum for... Um, it's not necessarily the most optimum for guitar audio. But it's really good for spoken audio. It's really fast to set up. And as long as I don't hit the microphone, it the audio is clearer. Um, for the guitar thing, it's okay. I mean, it, it gets some stuff as long as I don't move too crazy. But I'm using the earphones not to hear anything. They're mainly, um, they're a microphone really. It's for the microphone on it. Hey, Marion, how you doing? Learning jazz theory, secondary dominance and augmented skills. Are you doing um, minor, minor third, minor, minor third, minor second augmented skills or are you doing whole tone skills? Because there's two kinds of augmented skills. So Rafe Sama, any any tips on tremolo picking? Um, for tremolo picking, right? I'm not really that good at it, but I find that you're trying to find like a good place to pivot. So let's say I'm pivoting here. I if I do that on the first string, I'm doing upward pick slanting, so I'm resting on the second string. I think it's it, there's two kinds of tremolo picking that you can try, which is unmeasured, which is just play. I find that it's much better if you can do uh, measured tremolo picking, which means that so it's time right one e n o two e n o three e n o four e n o. Yeah. 
and and the hardest thing is actually uh, to to do this without getting tension so the tension I get tension around the shoulder it tightens up because I'm trying to do this I'm trying to keep it stable but so my shoulder might get tight so I'm trying my best to not get that tightness because that will uh, make me not play so fast and relax uh, so that's one and then uh, the anchor thing that I mentioned so I, I'm still holding the pick but I'm I'm basically trying to keep it tight enough that the pick stable but loose enough that I can achieve can I also try It's not really that tight right now. The timing's not really that smooth, but you know you have you kind of have to start somewhere. I haven't worked on tremolo picking in a while, but that's a great question. I might end up practicing that a bit more. Cara betul adjust tali gitar. Adjust tali macam like adjust. Hey Marion, is it adjust not tuning tali ataupun adjust setup? Macam mana? I have no idea. I'm going to check out someone with. Um, your phone for the next round before investing in the mic. Hello, Arif. Ah, okay, that's a good scale, Aaron. That that's a great scale. It's uh, I don't use it as much. I, I learned it in college. Oh, so. You know, there's a there's a cool like. Uh, <laughs> Just kind of Brian Baker. Check out some Brian Baker. He he does some stuff with uh, the augmented scale that I like. I didn't realize he used it until I started transcribing his stuff. Uh, with uh, he does a lot of triad pair stuff. You you might like it if you like the augmented scale stuff. I have no idea. I'm going to check with someone who knows about a mic. Earphone mic can try. The the earphone mic thing might be tricky for you because. Um, because you're using a cello, so I don't know how, because the cable is not very long. I'm playing guitar, so I'm quite close to my computer, uh, my computer screen, and, and henceforth, the, I'm quite close to the webcam. But if I was playing uh, cello, I would need to be further away, so that's an issue. Um, if you have a good phone, if you have an iPhone, it should be good as long as your um, internet connection is pretty good. Um, I used to do a lot of these Facebook Live things with just my phone. Um, but now I use this because it's just easier to type out stuff and it reply things like this. Um, what else would I say? The microphone stuff, right? A mic mic. If you're using a laptop setup, I'm using a laptop setup. I'm using the. I've done a bunch of things with Facebook Live. I've done. I've done um, using OBS. I, I like using OBS because you can do. I can do. I can change the. I can change the close up and further away. There's different settings you can do for the camera. Um, I find that that's a bit time consuming. And I find that nowadays I just want to. I just want to do the session really quickly and not worry about setup. If I was to get a mic, I would probably get a recommend getting a USB mic, a simple USB mic. Any of the blue mics should be fine. Uh, like I used to use the Snowball. Um, yeah, I used to use the Snowball. I had one of those. Uh, those work pretty good. Not the best quality, but uh, I, I mean, I recorded an EP on album on it, so it couldn't be that bad. Um, but there's a bunch of USB mics that are like quite easy to use because they just go straight into your computer. If you're not using a USB mic, if you have already have an interface, then you can use any mic really. I, I have a 57 that I use for almost everything. Holesworth secret scale. Yeah, Holesworth uses it. 
I, I know a bunch of people who use it. Um, mostly saxophone guys uses it a lot. Can you show me Eric Johnson pentatonic? Yeah, Eric Johnson does the down, this downward pick slanting stuff, which is nice. So if you have A minor, he does a one. I think he does the grouping in five, if I'm not mistaken. From I saw this in the Troy Brady stuff. Is so this I'll, I'll show you the thing first. I'll show you the example first before. Uh, Okay, I'll show you how the example is, and then I'll show you the, the picking pattern. So, like. So, it's like uh, the grouping is in five. One, two, three, four, 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 five. And the picking is down, up, down, up, down, sweep down. Sweep down, up, down, up, down. Sweep down, down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Oh, sorry. things that one of the things that I, I know Eric does is uh, he changes the pentaton he will add like a nine or something which is what I was trying to do I don't remember the exact licks because I haven't transcribed enough Eric Johnson to to know to give you much better examples but like the a minor pentatonic there um, let's say here kind of an Eric thing. I, I, I've heard lines that he does that. So it's basically A minor pentatonic, but added the B. How about Holesworth, bro? I haven't transcribed that much Holesworth, man. Um, so I, I wish I could tell you more. Um, the thing that I like, that I know about Holesworth is that um, he typically, and this is from reading about his stuff, and I have, I have a book of his transcriptions, uh, Reaching for the Uncommon Chord or something. Um, he will specifically use certain voicings for certain pieces and then try to find different voicings for different pieces. Very song specific, which is kind of cool. Um, but I, yeah, I wish I could tell you more about Holesworth, but I haven't transcribed that much of his stuff. I, actually, I don't think I've transcribed any Holesworth, to be honest. I've transcribed more Tim Miller, which is kind of Holesworth inspired, but it's not really Holesworth. I should really check it out. Uh, so yeah, can't can't help you on that. Not yet. Muhammad Rani, tanya sikit abang as sebelum pun habis battery. Ada tak tips bagi semangat practice kerja kerja hilang mood? Um, I'm gonna borrow Gary V's thing. You're gonna die. 
How about that? That's Gary V. Gary V check up, you're gonna die. So you know what that means is you can take it as what how you're gonna how you like, which means that life is short. So if you want to practice guitar, practice. If you don't, don't practice. Uh, do anything that makes you happy. You know, do stuff that makes you happy. If you, and I think playing guitar as part of daily life is quite a joyful thing to do. Uh, kalau you hilang mood nak practice kan, uh, you might need to find uh, style music yang menarik, yang interesting for you. And, or you might need to find a teacher, or you might need to check out situations where you will be inspired. Macam cari gitaris yang, menca- yang menarik, yang you boleh copy, atau pergi tengok klinik, so workshops yang menarik, or you might want to download a, like a new album or buy a new album, buy a new CD if you buy CDs or check out new stuff on Spotify. Um, so basically to smangat practice, you realize this. There, there's two ways. One is to to uh, to come from appreciation. Maksudnya, kita bersyukur, kita hidup, kita boleh practice guitar. Or you boleh check out from FOMO side, fear of missing out. Which means that kalau you tak practice, someone else is practicing. They're getting better, you're not getting better. So if you are more motivated out of takut orang lain jadi lebih hebat daripada you, you can use that lah. Like if you don't practice, someone else is practicing, they're getting much better than you right now. Right now, someone's practicing and they are getting way better than you because they're tak semang- tak, they, they are keep, they're practicing more than you. So if you feel missing out, think of that. If you're thinking of appreciation, notice that some people have no chance to practice guitar sebab they might not even have a guitar or never seen a guitar or might not have access to guitar or might not even have a phone to check out like something like this Facebook Live uh, so they can't practice guitar. They might not own one or they might not have hands even. So you can come from gratitude, appreciation, bersyukur or you can come from fear of missing out. Either way, we're going to die. So you might as well do stuff that makes you happy as much as possible and um, maximize your life. So that's some motivation. How does he play? You know, I haven't seen you. Uh, have you? Have we met before? How do you find my page, man? Is this the first time you're tuning in? But good question, Tommy Manuel. I'll answer your question. How does Tommy Manuel does his quiet voicings? I can show you what he did with because um, I was practicing the close to you arrangement. What is it? What is the next part? Huh? Let's say we just take that part, that small part. Uh, that whole section really is E major. So you have the. So the voicings there are those are just voicings for E, E major, B, E, G sharp, which is a close voicing. Then it goes to D sharp, G sharp, B, which is a E flat major, uh, E major seven, uh, with the higher. Close voicing as well. Well, not close, like it's a G sharp minor, which is still related to E. Then it goes to an E six nine. So that's all major. And he does with open E. Here it goes to G uh, A sharp minor seven with an eleven. Then it goes here uh, D sharp minor minor. He does this uh, line cliche thing, which is uh, a standard E my if uh, D sharp minor voicing. Then, so all all those things are they're, they're pretty standard chords. The the most jazziest thing that he did there was the the six nine here with the open E because if you did it, so that's kind of pretty, right? So major major seven. With the open E, so it depends because he uses a lot of different voicings. Uh, but 
the way I would look at it is he finds voicings that are that fit the style. So in this case, this is kind of a jazzy ballad arrangement. Um, so he's using close voicings and he's using some jazzier. Well, he's using some six nine voicings and some pretty standard uh, jazz voicings. So it depends on the style. I mean, that, I I don't know. Glenn Campbell. Um, I don't really know Glenn Campbell's work. I've heard the name. Let me check. Oh, that guy. The country guy. Yeah, man. Um, I'm not familiar with Glenn Campbell's work, unfortunately. Do you have an album you would recommend or something to check out? Let me know, Ethan. Um, Fidaus, how do you memorize skills the easiest way? Uh, easiest way. Hmm. I would recommend knowing the major skill. The way I look at it is, um, I have a whole. I'm, I'm working on a whole system. I, I want to call it the Asama Guitar Method working title, uh, but I also have. I also have a larger thing for the jazz stuff, which I, I'm going to, I'm calling the, the poetic method. And in the poetic method, I have a, a whole bunch of different concepts. But for the scale stuff, it's really this, you know, let's say we take a scale like C major. How do I memorize that? Firstly, you need to know where the root is. So in this case, C major, C is the root. Okay, then the next thing is I need to know what the numbers, what the formula of the scale is. So C major is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. Uh, what else can I know about the scale? I need to know uh, that if it's in solfege, I would say, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Okay, uh, so once I know the the formula, and I know the solfege, I need to know the note names as well. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So I guess your answer to your question is actually, if you want to memorize it the easiest way, you want to know as many ways to understand it. So you need to know the note names, you need to know the formula, you need to, if you can, know the solfege, and if you know that, after that you know the fingering, and what fret is on. So there's five things there. There's note names, function, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, there's solfege, which is solfeggio, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And then you have the fingering. The fingering would means this. If I learn a scale, I know this is second finger, fourth finger, first, second, four, one, three, four. That's the fingering for it. Now the frets will be third fret, fifth fret, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. Then I need to know the picking as well. Down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. I'm doing economy here. Down, up, down, up, down, down. Or I can also alternate. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So, the easiest way would be to know all the ways because if you d did it, a lot of people will learn like this, you know, they will learn the scale and they will say, okay, third fret, fifth fret, second, three, five, one, uh, two, four, five, which means you're memorizing the tap. The problem when you memorize the tap is that uh, you probably forget it after that. <laughs> you won't last very long. So it may, might be so-called easy, but it's a waste of time because you're not going to remember it for very long. I, I've known people who are professional musicians. They were gigging musicians, um, and they don't know what notes they're playing. So you may be playing for 5, 10, 20 years, but you might not know what you're doing. So at some point, it will it will make some things difficult. Not everything, you know, some people can can survive without knowing the notes, but um, it's better better to know them. It's not, it's not that difficult, it's time consuming. 
you should check out Glenn Campbell, Gentle on My Mind. He plays, and in that video, he has a lot of country musicians. I think it might be one of the topics on YouTube. Cool stuff, really good. Cool, man. Thanks for the suggestion. I'll, I'll put that in my to-watch list. Thanks for the suggestion. Appreciate that. X Y Zhuang. How are you doing, man? Thanks for joining in. Sean, I memorized D7 as a mirrored D major. That's a good one. It's F major 7 as holding a bow flat one-handed. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good visual aid. Yeah, when I started playing guitar, I initially used a lot of... Um, I initially used a lot of um, visual mnemonics, you know, just how visually things look. It helps. It's really useful. I think you should use anything that will help you memorize things. Okay. Welcome to Daoist. Okay. While waiting for another question or two, um, just to let you guys know, if you guys are guitar guitarists, if you're watching this, I assume you're a guitarist, and you want to make some side income, maybe you want to buy a pedal, maybe you want to buy a new guitar, maybe you want to buy a guitar book or something. Uh, I don't know what guitarists want to buy. Maybe you want to buy like a blue chip pick or some fancy gravity picks or something, and you're looking to uh, get some extra money to buy those things, you might want to check out my new course. I have a new course called How to Start Teaching Guitar Lessons. It's at www.azsummit.com forward slash teach, T-E-A-C-H. It's a course to help you uh, learn how to start teaching guitar, how to find students, how to uh, find what you're good at, what you should, what you could teach, and kind of organize your thoughts so that you can start making some side income from teaching. Uh, so it's more, it was designed, intended for people who have never taught guitar but have been playing guitar and want to make some extra money from teaching guitar. And uh, it, but however, it works as well if you've been teaching for a while but feel that maybe you're not getting enough students, not getting enough money, or maybe you feel that you're not unhappy, you're getting bad students or students that you that are not motivating. Uh, so you can check out the course is asamat.com forward slash teach t e a c h. The link is in the in the description. It's a cool course, and I think it's gonna help out anyone out there who wants to make some extra money from teaching. So check that course out. It's available now. Helps since I was learning in the beginning, uh, since there were many courses. Yeah, totally, man. I mean, I, I totally, I'm part of the school of thought where if you can find some kind of way to help you memorize something, if it works right, go for it. Because there's so many ways to, to do things, and I don't really think there's one so-called one ultimate correct way. I feel that there's many paths, many ways on this journey to learn guitar, play guitar. Almost every time I've, every time I've learned something that I thought to be the absolute truth for the awesome, most awesome thing ever, I find someone else who breaks it. Someone who does something completely opposite and it works as well. What Mirza asks, what guitar pedal do you prefer for beginning punk rock? You probably want to get some kind of distortion, I guess some kind of distortion or overdrive, right? What do punk rock, uh, what do they use? I would want to get some kind of overdrive or, uh, okay, let me check out what's available online. I'm just doing a quick Google search on this. If you ask me anything about pedals, right? I mean, I have a lot of pedals, but I, I'm not like a punk musician. So... Yeah, as I predicted, you know, you you know, distortion overdrive. What would you want to get? I don't know what do people use. A rat, I guess. A rat's nice, you know. I have a Proco Rat too, which I like. That makes sense. Yeah, I would I would use a Proco Rat too. Um, what else do people use? I think, you know, if you had a good amp and, um, okay, rat, rat. Seems like people recommend the Proco rat. Kingmaker, DOD, Timmy, 
I don't have, I, I never use it, Timmy. Yeah. I guess I would recommend, it, it depends, some kind of overdrive pedal, overdrive or distortion pedal. Um, if you can, if you can afford it, get a rat. I mean, get a Proco Rat 2 or something similar. Um, I don't know how much they are now. When I bought my Proco Rat 2, this was a long time ago. This was probably 14 years ago. It was like 60 or 80 US dollars. I bought it off Amazon, of all things. I, I got a, and yeah, I got a Proco Rat 2 off Amazon. It was affordable. I, how much are they now? Proco Rat 2. I'm looking at it on sweetwater.com. It's seventy dollars, so it's still about the same. Um, how much would they be? Maybe at Music Bliss. At Music Bliss, it's out of stock. This is for Malaysia, but it's supposed to be three hundred fifty ringgit. On Amazon, it is. Yeah, it's supposed to be four hundred or five or three hundred fifty ringgit. Sixty nine ninety nine Proco Red Two. How much did I get? So I bought it in 2007. Yeah. So some kind of big muff. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't own a muff, a big muff, so I, I'm, I'm not sure. You, you could get one. I mean, I guess the, the thing about pedals, I really recommend, besides you know going on YouTube and listening to a lot of these demos, is if you can go to a shop where they have a lot of these pedals, just try to A B test and try them back to back, you know. Uh, I would say it's kind of good to already have a budget, like you know, in, in, in terms of maybe you have three hundred fifty ringgit or four hundred ringgit or six hundred ringgit or you know hundred US dollars or something. And then just go to the shop and, and try out a whole bunch of them. Maybe tr go there, try them it depends on whether your intent is to buy that day or just to try out and then come back another day after you thought about it a little bit. Um, I've done it both ways, so. But yeah, I, I think a Proco Rat Two will be pretty sweet. They're 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 nice. It sounds great. What music do you currently listen to to keep you inspiring today? Um, yeah, the EQ is important. Yeah, you can use most overdrives. I, I agree with Sean on this. You know, you can use most overdrive or distortion pedals. There's so many kinds that a lot of it's really good. So you, it's a matter of taste. XC Zhuang asks, what music am I currently listening to? Uh, the most recent stuff I've been listening to, you know what I really like recently, recently, to be perfectly honest, is that KDA song, uh, the one uh, from League of Legends. It's like so well produced. I love the production on it. I think it's very under, well, I know it's a huge pop hit, uh, but I think not enough people realize how very smart the arranging and the mix and the vocal production. It's very, very ingenious. I like that track a lot. Um, so I was listening to that extremely a lot when it just came out, like um, last month, the month before. When it came out, I was listening to it on repeat all the time. Um, in terms of other music, I've been listening a lot to Sid Jacobs, S-I-D-J-A-C-O-B-S. Uh, I'm doing some work with Mike's Masterclasses.com. It's a, it's a cool US website where they do uh, educational jazz guitar lessons. So I've been listening to a lot of players from that that are creating lesson content on that website. So uh, Sid Jacobs, um, who else is on the site? Tom Lippincourt. Tom Lippincourt is amazing. Um, I'm working on some some video editing for the lessons that he, I did some video editing for his upcoming lesson on walking bass lines and chords, art, the art of walking, the art of bass and chords, and then walking bass, um, walking bass and chord basics and bossa nova Base, base six or something. Uh, is those are really good. Uh, they're not out yet. They're coming out. The lessons are coming out. So I've been listening to uh, some Steve Herberman from the site as well. Uh, a lot of the recent jazz stuff I've been listening to is um, I listen to a lot of Julian Large, although not uh, not this past few weeks. Should really check out some more. 
Mm, today, right, today, I was listening to that track, uh, that Lady Gaga track from um, the new movie she's in. I was transcribing, what was that song there? I was listening to it uh, while I was teaching. I was teaching uh, transcribing to a student, and we, I was figuring it out while we were listening to it. Diamond Well. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nak tanya sikit. Dekat Malaysia, ada tak market untuk instrumental music for guitar? I mean, okay tak market kat sini. Um, I'll tell you my experience. Uh, there, To be honest, what market? <laughs> I mean, there is a there is kind of a market lah. Uh, the in terms of there is like the post rock kind of scene where people listen to instrumental music. Um, when I started out playing fingerstyle guitar, it was in two thousand acoustic fingerstyle guitar two thousand one two thousand. So, wow! Well, I started I started gigging instrumental guitar music about nineteen years ago. Feels like a long time now. Huh? I think about it. Nineteen years, nineteen or twenty. Actually, I started gigging already from ninety-eight. So, how long is that? Twenty-one years ago. I started gigging twenty-one years ago, uh, playing instrumental acoustic guitar music. Um, yeah, th there is a market. I mean, I was gigging. I, I've I've been getting paid gigs to play solo instrumental music for years, for 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 a long time. Um, so, kalau you know perform instrumental music, boleh, boleh dapat gig. But the way you nak cari gig, the way I cari gig dulu was saya, uh, I gig in the singer-songwriter circuit. So actually there is no fingers, so to say, instrumental guitar gigging circuit. I mean, honestly, this, that doesn't exist lah. So at least at, when I started out, so I used to gig in the singer-songwriter circuit and I also would gig within the jazz circuit. So uh, and nowadays, I think there's more of a rock and instrumental rock and post-rock kind of thing that's happening. Um, so, if I were you, so the question about whether other market ni, you have to go deeper into the question. Is your question, bro, boleh, can I tell I bought instrumental music, boleh dihaik makan tak? Is that the question? Or is the question, kalau I bought instrumental music ni, kalau within two, three years, will I quit or not? So, or can I get enough gigs? Market, there's always a market. It's just a matter of what do you mean by the market? Is the market big enough? And then the question is, are you good enough for it? Because um, there's always people who want to buy stuff, but if it's good, people will buy it. If it sucks, people are not going to buy it. Uh, but if you're asking whether there's a market, uh, the market will tell you you shouldn't do something uh, you don't want to second guess it. You shouldn't trust me anyway for that in that, that case because I don't know, instrumental music is such a wide thing. If you did something, let's say, very, very poppy, and, uh, then it's a different audience. If you did something very classical, it's a different audience. If you did something very post-rock, it's a different audience. If you did instrumental and it's like, uh, you know, background music for doctor's office or something, it's very different. So it depends on what kind of instrumental music. If you check up instrumental music, like um, Steve Vai, Joe Satrani, like kind of rock, virtuoso rock, that's a different market as well. So uh, if you're curious about it, put up some music, you know, put, put a track on Instagram, put a video on YouTube, put some songs on Facebook, you know, your own original stuff. You'll you'll find you'll find out within like a year or two years whether there's a market for it, because everyone's different, um, and you will only really know whether people like it when you put it out and you keep putting up more and more stuff. So, Kalina, wait until the when I started out. There's no market for it. I mean, there no real market for it. You you can create a market for it, or you can attract the market to it. And plus, I, to be honest, I wouldn't even think of Malaysia as the only market. If you're doing good stuff right now because of the internet, because of all this, um, because of social media, your market could be the world. You know, you could be, you can defend it at Canada, you can defend it at Germany. Because you can put it up and doesn't mean that only people in Malaysia are, going, are supposed to like it. It's not that internet is limited that you put it out online only someone from Malaysia will hear it, only someone from KL will hear it. No, it means that 
you can get someone from Russia listening to it, or Brazil, if it's cool. So, there, the question, the answer is yes, there's a market. Um, how big the market depends on how interesting the music is. Um, how big is your market? Well, the more you put out, the more you're going to find out. Boleh cari makan tak? Okay, kalau uh, the question is boleh cari makan tak? Depends how good you are. If you're very good, boleh cari makan. If you rajin, boleh cari makan. But the thing is this, cari makan macam mana? Like if you just not gig my instrumental music, uh, not really. Tak, there's not, I don't think there's enough places to gig in Malaysia to play instrumental music. Unless you play in like jazz, then there's a lot of hotels. There's a lot of venues where you could play instrumental music for, like, you know, jazz. If you're playing jazz, yeah, I do. Like, like play it at weddings, play it at for function, for events, for album, for event launches, things like that. But it depends on what kind of instrumental music, um, and also depends on the venue. So, color you. If you're very good, there will be a way to share makan. If you're okay, okay, then it's hard. To be honest, M playing music is very hard. If you're like, macam okay aja, boleh cari makan. You have to be a bit more creative lah. So, uh, yeah, the the short answer is boleh cari makan. Is it easy? No, it's very difficult. <laughs> and that's the truth. Uh, okay, Diamond Well said, you're saying I need to go for it. I'm saying if you're curious, go for it. If you're takut, don't go for it. And the, the real thing I'm saying is that if you want to go for some, you want to try something, right? Don't wait for approval from me. You don't need to wait for me to say, bro, the scene is awesome, bro. You should go into it. Don't even trust that, uh, you know, my opinion on that. Because uh, my opinion is kind of skewed to my, my experience. So if you are curious about it, go for it, man. We only live once. Why not try it out? But if you're afraid, then don't. But I'm saying that life, we only live life once. Why not try it out, man? And when you try out, you'll, you'll quickly find out whether you're good or bad. You'll quickly find out whether the market is ready for you or you're ready for the market. Um, but if you're going to try it out, you got to work hard. But that's like everything in life. Amin Shafiq, boleh share tips untuk jadi musician yang bagus, saya drama. Okay, Amin, kalau drama kan, the, my first tip is this. Um, if you are in KL, go watch as many gigs of really good drummers. So go for a lot of pop shows where they are good drummers. You know, kalau macam, for example, tomorrow there's a show uh, happening under the weekend sessions. Go for that show, watch. The, watch that concert if you, you know you're a drummer. Um, for, as a drummer, you want to get better at playing in time, in groove, as much as possible, which means that listen to a lot of music, play along with a lot of music. Um, secondly is to be a good musician, record yourself often. Record yourself so you can hear how you're playing and really, really know whether you're playing with a good sound, with a good time, with good feel, with good vibe. Um, the other thing is to be a good musician, um, besides going to gigs, meeting people, learning from experienced musicians, recording yourself a lot, um, focus on the song, obviously jam along with like great songs, great recordings, great YouTube videos uh, so that you get the vibe really well. Um, and the biggest thing I can tell you is, um, well, another two more things. One is understand history. So listen from the music you like to the roots of where the music that you like is coming from. So if you like current neo soul, check out R and B. If you like R and B, check out blues. If you like blues, check out early blues. If you like early blues, check out African music. If you like African music, check out all the different kinds of African music. So really backtrack everything. Uh, if you like drumming, check out drumming from different cultures: African culture, South American culture, American culture. Listen to a lot of styles of music. Be open to listening to all those. Doesn't mean you're going to be good at playing all those styles, but listen to them. Be aware of the styles. Um, being open-minded is important to be a good musician. Um, other things: be be nice, be polite, be disciplined, be on time, like be reliable. If you say you're going to come for a rehearsal at 
12, you know, try to be there by 11.30, later if you can. Set up, be, be responsible. Because tons of musicians lose gigs because they're late, because they're unreliable, because they suck as human beings. Not because they suck as musicians, but because they're just not really nice people. Um, so be a good person. Always keep on learning. That's what I would say. Diamond well, thanks for your welcome, bro. Bang, nanti you end up video saya tengok apa yang salah. Rahimi, you want you want me to watch your video kan? Tolong post a link on the on your comments or in the comments. Sebab for for me, okay, if you want to ask feedback from me, you ask me to check out your video and you tak bagi link. It's very difficult for me. I have to go and try to find your video. It, you see what I mean, tak? You nak minta tolong kan? You want to make it as easy as possible for someone to help you. So if you want, post the video to cut in the comment section. Then I can later I can check it out. And the thing is, kan? Nak cakap apa yang there's, salah? There's always going to be something wrong. Um, and if someone asks me like, listen, watch a video, tell me what's wrong. If I can find 50 mistakes in there, right? How many do I tell you? All 50 and the problem is that it, there's so sometimes there's so many things that we want to fix We cannot fix everything though. So we have to fix one thing at a time so um, But yeah, but in case you shy to post the link in the comment section in case lah, you can also uh, send me a message lah, send me a DM and Then uh, I'll try to check it out, but make it as easy as possible because you not mean that favor they orang kan. Uh, make it as easy as possible for someone to check it out and just know kalau you minta someone to give you feedback be aware that um, If you ask me for feedback Let me know whether you really want honest feedback or if you want specific things much I'm like is it about the songwriting is it about the technique, you know the more specific you are about what you're looking for uh, The better I can help you out Okay so okay guys, I think I'm gonna take off in a bit. So I'll take maybe one more question. Kalau sesiapa ada soalan, I'll take one more question. Someone commented on something here. Oh, this is on a different video. Master, can you show me Haris Saleh, Gary Moore style? Man, I wish I could play the Gary Moore style. I don't really, I, I tak berapa pandai Gary Moore style. I haven't transcribed that much the big Gary Moore music. What's that song? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even remember it. The, I, I, I don't. I won't lie. I don't really, I don't really know his style that well. So uh, sorry, I cannot really show what I don't know. But I will check it out lah at some point. I have checked out some of the Gary Moore stuff, but I haven't transcribed enough uh, to to show you anything. I wish I could, you know. Uh, but there's there's so many things in the world to learn, right? It's um, impossible, nearly impossible for someone to know every single thing under the sun because it's. So much music out there, man. So much good stuff. But Gary Moore's great. Um, do you have a particular song you like from Gary Moore? Maybe I can check out something right now and transcribe a line or something, a lick that. Um, if I'm still got the blues, huh? that's a good track. Maybe I'll get one of the licks and I can show. How about. I'm trying to find a solo bit. Man, I don't even know where to start because I was listening to I, I'm listening to the Still Got the Blues. So much of it is like quite heavy overdrive and really killer sustain on it. I wouldn't be able to show it on this guitar, nor am I that good at that kind of approach. So, da, da, da.
I guess one thing you can take from that lesson, I mean that phrasing, is that it's very motivic. Maksudnya motivic ni, it's uh, it's related. So if you take, if you want to learn from the, not necessarily the technique, electric guitar technique or Gary Moore, but phrasing, right? Let's say I have E minor. So the progression is going like you know um The soloing there, right? I mean, that phrase itself, it actually fits the chord tone stuff. So, let's say D minor goes to the chord tone. So, you, I mean, I guess if you're on D minor, you should know what the chord tones are, the arpeggio. And then he uses the with the nine going to the flat G. So here. So it's a sequence, right? But it's related. So D minor. So if I took that, right, I could have, as long as you know the chord and you know the arpeggio, very vocal. I guess the style would be to get very vocal. Listen a little bit more to the thing and see what I can get any other details in the Yeah, I can do the bending on this guitar. Okay, he does some minor pentatonic stuff. Little 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 little, little. I guess one thing you can do is if you have A minor, because he does some runs at the end which are like kind of like busy runs, right? So I'll show you one thing. I, I don't know whether he does this, but this is like a fingering that I like, which is G A C D P G A C D E G A C D E. And to make it blues, I can do G A C D B e sharp E G A C D E B e sharp E. G A C D D sharp E. So I guess if you know those kind of uh, skills, right, to actually do faster runs where. Flashy runs are good for ending of sections because it just sounds like very dramatic. So um, think of longer lines, and that that should help out. Yeah, yeah, it's all about telling a story for sure. Who's your favorite jazz guitarist? Julian Lodge, <laughs> by far. Julian Lodge. Uh, Julian Lodge. I like Wayne Kranz a lot. Um, I actually like Mike Moreno, but more for what he taught me. Um, took a lesson with him not this last year, around this time la last year. Really life changing. Um, if I had to pick one jazz guitarist, Julian Lodge. Yeah, so I I guess that's that's one of the things you know. If you 
the thing about when you learn pentatonic or minor lines, right? You you want to actually have uh, phrasing, which means uh, uh, you want to start, go into the line and end. So if I have let's say a line, let's say I want to end it. Vibrato is important in Jerry Moss playing so. Something like that. So that's that's kind of the. So I guess like trying to finding a balance, so you might want to play something melodic like then, um, then. So then, then do some flashy, like fast stuff, you know. So if I did it, in And the most important thing is actually keeping that in time. Welcome, Harris. Wow, blue is like, 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 yeah. What do you think about Alex Touchings? Monster player, man. I love Alex Touchings. He's he's like really um. He's so musical, man. If you listen to Alex Touchings stuff, right? He has like he has the rock thing together. He has the blues thing together. He has the legato thing together. He has beautiful phrasing. I've only met him once. I met him at the Frank Gambali workshop a few years ago and got to talk to him for a little bit. But I know he does come to KL from now off and on and he's done some recording sessions and uh, performances in KL. I really want to meet him again and uh, pick his brain. Uh, he's great. I should really check out some of the JTC stuff. I haven't checked out enough of it or transcribed enough of it. But uh, yeah, Alex Hutchins is amazing. I think he's a brilliant mind. <laughs> Okay, let me just play some more blues stuff. Feeling very bluesy right now. So let me change keys to G minor.
jam. That's a great question, Ashen. How is it messing on G minor? Uh, Blue Bossa. That's a great question. Let me show you. That's, that's one question I can answer. So Blue Bossa, the chords go, the chord that he's asking is on the D minor 7 flat 5. See, okay. So this chord. Here, I typically, I'll tell you what's the so-called the correct scale choice, and I'll tell you what I like to use. Uh, the correct choice would be D Locrian, so it would be E flat major. the correct choice. 
uh, D low grade. So it's D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D. Uh, what I like is half diminish. It's not diminish. Diminish is different. It's a diminished triad, but it's not half diminished. So it's uh, D. Is D E flat F, G A flat B flat C D. But what I like actually is using a D local natural nine, which is a D E F E natural F, G A flat B flat C D. Which you can also think of it as um, an F melodic minor. B, B minus 7 flat 5, but I'm playing F melodic minor. So F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D natural, E natural, F. Mm. But starting on the D, which is a D low grade natural line. Yeah, D-Locrian is the most inside sounding. D-Locrian natural 9 with the E is the jazzier. So that's the actual sound. Uh, the way I actually think about it a lot of the times is I think of the arpeggio first. So D, uh, if it's D-Locrian natural 9. Uh, let me show my frame here. Okay, if D low here natural nine, it'll be uh, I I will still use D minus seven flat five, which is D D F A flat C. to learn all the fingerings as much as possible so here D minus seven flat five fingerings, and then you add the the nine. So, for example, let me get the so I'm trying to get. I like that sound. That E natural. That, that to me is like kind of a nice to the C minor.
You hear some of these tonalities in death metal. I wouldn't be surprised, man. A lot of the Locrian stuff is very metal, actually. You probably would have heard it. Metal, uh, a lot of this kind of, this kind of like. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, um, I need to get it more aggressive on you. I'm not really a metal guy. You can get some interesting, like, kind of um, melodies when you do uh, like polyrhythmic stuff. So you did one, two, three, four, five, 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 or like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, if you start once you start doing like odd groupings like five and seven and six and you mix it up, it's like really it gets really dark because all the Locrian sounds and odd meters are like the ingredients for like all the lot of stuff. That's how I would do one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. uses that kind of stuff yeah I mean if you think about it right uh, if you did what I did there uh, with um, obviously better picking technique and uh, if you just use the kind of sounds that you would hear in metal like the right kind of tones the right kind of settings right play it cleaner uh, play it more aggressive maybe a pointy pick Would I have a pointy pick pointy picks are better for this kind of things I believe my pick was not pointy enough. I know I have a pointy pick somewhere. Is this pick pointy enough? Because just the pointy pick thing, because you get a lot of definition in the attack. And this is the pointiest pick I have. Super pointy pick. But then you get so you get a lot. I get a lot of definition if I use a pointy pick. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So that's like a pedal point thing. I guess it's a pedal point. I mean, it's the repeating thing. The note, the higher note, highest note changes. So I like that kind of sound. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not very good at it, but yeah, the pointy pick gets a bit more definition. So I think it cuts through the mix better. If I'm using thicker strings, it's actually quite good because that contrast, I think, will work quite well. So yeah, guys. So hope you enjoyed my uh, metal uh, metalish day. Thanks for the question, Ashan and Sean, and Suang and who else? Ideal, Haris, uh, Sean. Rahimi, Diamond Well, Amin Shafiq, Mirza, all you awesome people. Blade, Blade Maiton, Aaron Cheng, Arip, Amil Sulaiman, Marion, Hazlami, Hazim. All you guys, thanks so much for watching. And I'm going to take off soon. Again, uh, if you guys are guitar players and you want to get into teaching, check out my new course. It's just out. It's called How to Start uh, Teaching Guitar Lessons. It's at www as Samad, A-Z-S-A-M-A-D.com forward slash teach, T-E-A-C-H. Check it out. It's on promo now for 10 US dollars, 40 ringgit. Uh, it's an audio lesson thing uh, that comes with a 24-minute audio lesson. I'm guiding, I will guide you. In the audio lesson, I guide you to how to organize the information that you have in your head uh, and how to start uh, getting a guitar student, your very first guitar student is paying you money and so you can make some money. Uh, so check that out. A lot of people have been asking me about teaching, guitar teaching um, over the years. Just different. Some of my private students are really interested in developing their teaching practice. So that, that course will be something that you can check out. Um, how would you explain? Okay, this is a great question, man. How would you explain the harmonic knowledge of Nick Johnston? I'd love to get into these new players. I know the fact they sound way different than David Gilmore. Um, let me answer your last question. That question is really great. Were you there at the Nick Johnston workshop? Because he really... Are you in KL? I don't even know whether you're in KL. But Nick Johnston did a workshop at uh, Bentley Music. It was amazing. Um, I think the thing I got from the Nick Johnston thing is he knows his theory inside out. And he's very curious about the harmony. So I'll show you one, one thing that... It's not what he's using, but what I think the same kind of thinking he's using. So let's say we take a key, let's say E. What's a normal E voicing, E major voicing? Normal E major voicing would be E. It's quite plain, very boring. What Nate Johnson would do would probably add a 9. Or maybe he might even add a 6. Maybe that, and then maybe change, go in the key. So let's say that, how do you make it prettier? Maybe suspension. Maybe add the six on top. Maybe oh, it might be too hard. Maybe add the, third, the, the G on top here. G sharp. Maybe add the B here. Maybe add the C there. No, maybe add the A here. So that's something I would think. That's what I think he would do. He would just check out a tonality, let's say E, E Ionian. And find, trying to find a pretty voicing, right? Uh, maybe here.
Hey, I haven't learned the Atomic Mind intro. She gone. Is that that song? She's gone. Everyone, everyone loves that song. I haven't learned it, man. So sorry. So extensions. Uh, yeah, extension. I think it's extensions and thinking modally. Extensions, thinking modally, and using voicings that would not. It's not just extensions. It's using voicings in the ways that, not like the way a jazz player would use it, but more in the way a rock player would use harmony. So, for example, what would a jazz player do? Play this. Very standard. It sounds like John Mayer is. Um, how would you do that, and make it sound more rock? So maybe um, do this. Or maybe do this, or maybe do, um, I can't say this, maybe do this. So that sounds more, to me that sounds more Nick johnson -y. or maybe do it uh, with uh, another note on top here. Maybe here. I can get the F sharp, the E on top. To that. Something like that, and then kind of messing around with it so it sounds more rock. Maybe change the bass note. Kind of stuff I'm doing here. Um, B flat minor at nine. Okay. Um, I was playing a D, uh, an E. This is an E six, E major, E six nine. Then it was going to E six nine over G sharp. Then it goes to this is a A major A sus two major seven with a six. It's just basically in the key of E. And uh, th these kind of things, the more rhythmically precise it becomes, the more it's like it becomes more like Pliny. It becomes more like Chon. To me, like Nick Johnston, Pliny, Chon, they come from the same kind of uh, harmonic world. So it's jazz harmony played in a metal or rock context. Yeah, it can sound like Sting a little bit. Yeah, depending on the, the thing that... So that, that sounds old school there, so I wouldn't do that. Maybe I would do... Yeah, Sting's a great songwriter, man. Totally. She with the heart is different, different, different kind of part. But yeah, it's, it you know it, it was gonna sound a lot like that kind of stuff because it's a nylon string. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, so now I'll go off. So a lot of this stuff is like I said. Yeah, you're right. It's extensions, it's, but it's not just the extensions. It's how you voice it and how you rhythmically play it. That makes it sound more modern sounding. All the kind of Pliny, John, Nick Johnson stuff. It's a lot of it's kind of a mix of that precise metal rhythmic accuracy with jazz harmony. So that's as simple as I, I, I can explain it the way I see it. Okay, guys. Yeah, I need to finish writing it. But thanks for uh, asking the question. Kind of led to there. Okay, guys. Again, like I said, thanks so much for watching. It's been a while. This is long than I, longer than I thought. One hour, 27 minutes. I should be sleeping. Um, so thanks so much for watching. If you guys want to hang out with me, give you guys a, a, a little info on the download. 
I should be uh, hanging out tomorrow at the Malaysian International, is it Malaysian International? Malaysian Jazz Piano Festival. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, it's called the Malaysian Jazz Piano Festival. Um, I'll be at the Malaysian Jazz Piano Festival tomorrow from 11 o'clock till about 4 o'clock. I'm attending the Julian Chan um, saxophone workshop, and then I'll be attending the Chiu Siang uh, arranging workshop. Uh, the workshops are free, so you guys can come and hang out. Uh, you don't have to pay anything. You just have to be there early to get seats. It's at KL Pack, KL Performing Arts Center um, in Sentul. You just Google KL Pack. Um, it's part of the Malaysian Jazz Piano Festival. I'll be going there to hang out and attend the workshops, learn some stuff, uh, meet some friends. So if you guys are free and you guys want to hang, uh, say hi to me, meet me there. Uh, and yeah, thanks so much again. Again, like I said, if you guys are listening to this, watching this, and if you are a guitarist and you want to teach guitar, you want to know how to start teaching guitar, check out the website, uh, assummit.com, www.assummit.com forward slash teach, T-E-A-C-H, for the new course, how to start teaching guitar lessons. Thanks again. Take care. See you guys again next time. Peace out.